After more than a 60-year absence, harbor porpoises and other marine animals are returning to San Francisco Bay. Anyone walking on the Golden Gate Bridge can see harbor porpoises at high tide. Every day I've been out since I've been working at the Harbor Porpoise Project, every day I've gone on the bridge, I, I've seen porpoises. So if you hang out there and just wait and look long enough, you'll probably see a porpoise. Oh, exciting. I wouldn't have believed that you could do harbor porpoise five years ago. When John Stern told me they were photographing harbor porpoises from the Golden Gate Bridge, I, I, I almost laughed. I mean, I said, yeah, that's interesting. I'll go take a look. When I looked down and saw what they were doing and saw what they were seeing, it was back like being in the 70s looking at any whale. It was, it was a chance to do something that hadn't been done, and I was hooked. And I'm still hooked on this project, looking at harbor porpoises. And I think it's fascinating you can do it in San Francisco, on San Francisco Bay from the Golden Gate Bridge and look at cetaceans that haven't really had their story told. Harper porpoises used to live in San Francisco Bay. We know that historically because there's Indian middens, these mounds of refuse around the bay. And in Emeryville we know that there's porpoise bones throughout over a 2,000 year period. There's also um, sightings of porpoises in the bay uh, by reliable observers, um, scientists looking um, in the bay back into the 30s and maybe into the early 1940s, and that's about it. After that, the, the porpoise population seems to have abandoned San Francisco Bay. So why did harbor porpoises leave San Francisco Bay in the first place? By the end of World War II in 1945, San Francisco Bay had become a dead body of water. Stringing a large net across the bay to trap Japanese and German submarines also prevented large predators, such as porpoises, dolphins, whales, and sharks, from entering or leaving the bay. The dumping of sewage in the tailings from mines in the Sierras had killed much of the remaining sea life, such as anchovies and herring, that had thrived in the bay for thousands of years. But all this began to change in 1961 with the formation of the Save the Bay Foundation. By reducing the pollutants that fouled the water and destroyed wildlife, one of the primary unexpected consequences was the return of predators to San Francisco Bay. Five years ago, Professor Jonathan Stern, a marine biologist at San Francisco State University, discovered to his amazement that harbor porpoises were once again swimming under the Golden Gate Bridge and into San Francisco in large numbers. I think it's really part of a, a, a really great news for an environmental story because the porpoises were gone for so long, for probably 60 years, that the fact that they're back, it means that the bay is healthier. And uh, that's why I really you know, want to bring this story out and, and have people know about it, because I think this could be replicated in other places where people have given up on a habitat or they've said it's so polluted we'll never see changes there. Well, obviously in San Francisco Bay, we've seen some very positive changes, at least with respect to the porpoises. As a person who spends a lot of time in the water, because I surf just about every day, a cleaner environment impacts me personally. So as the bay has been clean, it's good for the environment, it's good for the people, it's good for the animals, and cleaner waters generally have more productivity, and so there's more food around for the animals, whether it's birds or porpoises or whales or, or, or seals and sea lions. Whoa. Amazingly, we have the Golden Gate Bridge. It turns out to be a wonderful wildlife observatory. It's 220 feet up, stand there and watch the porpoises as they come by. We can see them with their calves. We can see them underwater when they're trying to feed. And we can also see other kinds of social behavior, including mating. Well, there's very few places in the world where you can actually get close to harbor porpoises and count them. They see them in different parts of the world, like in Europe, but they're usually not very close to shore. So the amazing thing to me on the bridge is that 
you can stand there and see lots of harbor porpoises. It's not just one or two coming in. You can stand there on a two hour period at high tide and count a hundred or more. Now the average day may be 30 or 40, but there have been times when we've seen up to 150 going through in just a few hours. I always thought of harbor porpoises as little, very small animals up for a very short, quick time, and their movements being somewhat chaotic, not knowing where they're gonna go, not knowing what they're gonna do. Looking down from the Golden Gate Bridge and looking down with people who've been looking at them for a number of years, and you're looking down like being in the sky. You're getting a God's eye view or you're getting a helicopter view of what's going on. So you could see the patterns and you started knowing the time because the guys like Bill Keener and John Stern told me, you started looking at the place, you saw they were related to current movements and you could see the current lines in the bay. The animals are along the tide lines and you can see it when you're looking down the bridge, you see the current lines and along those lines, some of the harbor porpoises will be and right as the tide starts to go out and all this current uh, uh, foam and things move out through the bridge, there'll be harbor porpoises right down below the bridge so you have a straight down shot. Once you see those patterns, it doesn't just change what you know from seeing from the bridge, it changes how you think of harbor porpoises from boats or from the land and my guess is if you come back in five years, we'll know a lot more about the pattern. We photograph porpoises for a couple of different reasons. One is we're trying to identify individuals, and that's never been done anywhere else in the world with harbor porpoises. So we're able to look at natural pigmentation patterns on their side, or scars or other kinds of marks on their skin that may be unique to an individual. And if you can find one that has a unique mark, and then you see it later the next year or two years later, you're able to track that porpoise over time. You might find a female, say, with a mark, and be able to find out if she has a calf every year or every other year. So that's the kind of information we're looking for. Right now, we seem to have the best platform with the Golden Gate Bridge, so we're finding things that other people uh, are not seeing. We've had maybe one or two photos from Europe where they think there's mating involved, and but that's, that's it. Whereas we've, over the last few years, have taken uh, pictures a hundred times of that behavior. So we're really getting a much better view into their life. We've seen a lot of really interesting harbor porpoises. We've seen ones with a shark bite mark on their side. One was pure white, an absolutely near albino animal that we call mini moby. We're seeing feeding, we're seeing mating behavior, we're doing IDs, all that stuff I would have I certainly said was impossible five years ago, and now I can hardly wait to see what they see next. Harbor porpoises, in fact, any of the half dozen porpoise species in the world have never been studied that way. So we have a real chance here of doing some uh, real game-changing observations on harbor porpoises. So here in San Francisco Bay, we've had this opportunity to be able to come in close contact with the porpoises. So in San Juan Island, if a porpoise sees a boat, it's gone. Like, you see them for a few surfacings and then they basically run off. But here in San Francisco Bay, with how tight the bay is and all the boat traffic that we're able to actually see the harbor porpoises go under the boats and come up and surface right next to the boats and gives us a great opportunity to see them. Probably my favorite experience that I've had was one of the days out on the boat and photographing harbor porpoises and the porpoises were coming right under the boat and you can see them surfacing right next to the boat. And you could see it on the waves, they would be like in the waves and we could actually watch them swimming around and that was really neat. What I'm hoping this, this film, this video will do, is encourage people to support research so we know more, so we answer more of these questions, and so the view becomes clearer.